In this section 4.5, we're going to be discussing inequalities that involve quadratic functions. There are two key important words in this topic. Quadratics, which we just previously discussed back in section 4.3, see the previous videos. Quadratic functions are anything that looks like a squared term, possibly a middle term, and possibly a constant. But in the past, we've always said that that's equal to some number. Now we're going to change it so that, that they are inequalities. So we might have a less than or a greater than symbol, and we might have a non equal to, anything that doesn't involve an equal sign. So how does this sign affect and change the graph of a quadratic without an equal sign? Well, there are some steps involved in solving inequalities. The first thing I would suggest you do is rearrange the inequality so 0 is on the right-hand side. This one has already been done for you. Then graph the function by finding the vertex and the intercepts. Well, we already know how to do that. So let's go ahead and do step 2. So let's first find the vertex. The vertex x-coordinate will be located at negative b over 2a, which is going to be negative, negative 1 over 2 times 1, which is 1 half. Once you find the x-coordinate, then you can find the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate is going to be located at f of 1 half. f of 1 half is going to be 1 half squared minus 1 half minus 12. So when I plug all that information in, you get negative 12 and a quarter. So my vertex is located at 1 half, negative 12 and a quarter. Then it also says, after we find the vertex, let's also find the intercepts. Well, the intercepts are going to be located. First, let's find the y-intercept, since that's the easier one to do. We set x equal to 0. So we have 0 squared minus 0 minus 12. So negative 12 is the y-intercept. So the point is 0, negative 12. The x-intercepts we find by plugging y equals 0. So we set this whole thing equal to 0, and we solve. If this is factorable, that will save time in finding the x-intercepts. If this is not factorable, your only choice is to use the quadratic formula. It turns out that this is indeed factorable. So I will have two x-intercepts, one at 4, and the other at negative 3. So step 2, which said graph the function by finding the vertex and intercepts, is what we're going to do now. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to graph this function, where I have the vertex at 1 half So at 1 half, negative 12 and a quarter, it has a y-intercept at 0, negative 12, and it has an x-intercept at 4, 0, and negative 3, 0. And I know my axis of symmetry is going to go down through x is 1 half, which is through my vertex. So I know it'll have a point over here because it is symmetric over that axis of symmetry. So when I connect all of this together, I get a rough sketch that looks like this. Now I go back up to my instructions where I set it equal to zero. I graphed the function. Now, 
you have two scenarios. If you're solving and you're looking for the function that is less than zero, or are you looking for the function where it's greater than zero? Well, we're looking for the function when it is less than zero. So when we're looking for where the function is less than zero, we're using scenario three, which says write all the intervals where the graph is below the x-axis. So if we're looking at my graph, again, I'm looking for the area where the function, this is the function, and where is that function less than zero? Where is y less than zero? That means the same thing. So where is this graph less than zero? Less than zero means it's below the x-axis. y is negative anywhere down here. y is positive everywhere up here. So if we were looking for where the function is greater than zero, we want anything on the graph that's above the x-axis. We want anything that is less than zero, so we want any part of the graph that is less than zero. This shaded area in green is the area of the graph that has a y coordinate that is less than zero. Every point on this graph in this green shaded area has a co set of coordinates where y is negative. So that would indicate that we have a function that is less than zero. Where is y less than zero? This is the area, this green area is the shaded area that is less than zero, where y is less than zero. So again, according to the instructions back up at the top, it says if you're solving for the function less than zero, write down all the intervals where the graph is below the x-axis. So I'm asking myself, where is the function below zero? Well, write down all of the, uh, you write down the x's, so the x in between negative three to four. Any number in between negative three to four, any x in between there is going to give you a negative y value. And since the endpoints are included because it has the underscore underneath the less than symbol, I am going to include the endpoints. I'm going to include these endpoints in my green and shaded area. You obviously can check these answers. If you would like to check these, pick any point in the shaded area. Zero is obviously a good one to pick, but you can pick two. Okay, Two is a good number that we can test since it's inside this shaded area. And when I plug in two for x, I should get a negative y value. So going up back to the original, if I would like to check this, let's check the test point where an x is two. And if we plug it in here, we get 2 squared minus 2 minus 12, and we test. Is that indeed less than or equal to 0? Well, 4 minus 2 is 2, minus 12 is negative 10, and yes, that is less than 0. So any point you pick between negative 3 up to 4, any point you pick is going to come up with a true answer. If I test one that's outside of the range, for example, let's test a point that's outside of here. Let's test, for example, the number five, which should not be part of my solution. If I test the number five, we get five squared minus five minus 12, and we test to see whether that is less than zero. Well, this is 25 minus five is 20, 20 minus 12 is 8, and that is indeed not less than 0. So I've just proven that the number 5 on my graph is going to yield a positive y value, because this is going to extend upward. So you can see that's not part of the graph, because we only want the parts of the graph that are below the x-axis, where y, or the function, is less than 0. So the answer to this problem is this interval right here. Those are the only x possibilities where the function is less than zero. 
we'll try two more. Okay, here we've got a function, negative 2x squared is greater than negative 11x plus 15. Now if you recall the original instructions, I'll put those back up here so we can see those. There we go. The original instruction said to rearrange the inequality so that zero is on the right hand side. So let's rearrange all of this and put this all on the left hand side. So we have negative 2x squared. We're going to add 11x and subtract 15 and set it greater than zero. So I move these two terms over to the other side. Now we're going to graph the function by finding the vertex and the intercepts. So let's first find the vertex. The x-coordinate will be located at negative b over 2a. So that's negative 11 over 2 times negative 2. So that's going to be positive 11 fourths, which is equal to, for a y-coordinate, we take that now and we plug that into the original function. And we get negative 2 times 11 fourths squared plus 11 times 11 fourths minus 15. When I plug all that into my calculator to save a little bit of time, you're going to get 1 eighth. So my vertex is going to be located at 11 fourths 1 eighth. Then we're going to find the intercepts. To find the intercepts of this graph, let's first find the y-intercepts by setting x equal to 0. When I plug x equal 0 into this original easier function here, we're going to have negative 2 times 0 squared plus 11 times 0 minus 15. All of that equals negative 15, so we have a y-intercept at 0, negative 15. To find the x-intercepts, we'll try to factor this. When we try to factor this, we have negative 2x plus 5 and x minus 3. Because you see negative 2x squared plus 6x plus 5x is plus 11 minus 15. So when you solve these for x, you're going to get positive 5 halves and 3. So I have x-intercepts at 5 halves 0 and 3, 0. Now, with that, if you didn't like to factor, you can use the quadratic formula. So if you don't like factoring, use the quadratic formula. Not everybody is great at factoring. It takes practice to get good at finding what those would be quickly. And if, again, you're not good at factoring, then just go ahead and use the quadratic formula. You'll get the same two answers that way. All right, so now that we have our key points, we can go ahead and do the graph of this. So we have a vertex at 1 11 fourths 1 eighth. So 11 fourths is almost 3, and 1 eighth is slightly above. And then we have a y-intercept at 0, negative 15, so that's going to be way down here. And then we're going to have x-intercepts at 5 halves, which is 2 and a half zero, and another at 3, 0. So you can see that this graph goes down like this. And so now we're asked to find where in the graph is, using this one, where is the function, okay, where is this function, which is this part right here, where is this function greater than zero? Well, the only place it's greater than zero, where is y greater than zero, is this part of the graph right here. This is the only part that's above the x-axis where y is positive. So I'm going to give the interval of the x in between here to here. So the x would be from 5 halves up to 3. We will not include those endpoints since the endpoints are not included in the original function. So this is the interval 
for where the function is positive. One more time. First step is to set this equal to 0. So let's slide the 45 over to the other side. So now we find the vertex and the intercepts in graph. So the vertex is going to be located at x equals negative b over 2a, which is negative 6 over 2 times 3, which is negative 1. The y is going to be located at the function evaluated at negative 1, so 3 times negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 minus 45, and so that y is going to be located at negative 48. So my vertex is at negative 1, negative 48. Now the x, inter excuse me, y intercepts are going to be located when x is equal to 0. So 3 times 0 plus 6 times 0, again we're using this one, minus 45. So we have y-intercept at negative 45. x-intercepts we find by plugging y is equal to 0. So we set this whole thing equal to 0. So 0 equals 3x squared plus 6x minus 45. And again, try to factor if possible. So I'm going to take out a greatest common factor of 3. And when I finish factoring this, I get uh, two numbers that multiply to make 15 but add up to 2. So that's going to be a positive 5 and a negative 3. And since this equals 0, that means my x is going to be negative 5 and 3. So I'll have an x-intercept at negative 5, 0, and 3, 0. So I have my x-intercepts, my y-intercepts, and my vertex. So let's graph. So my vertex is at negative 1, negative 48. Uh, so that's like way down here. A y-intercept at 0, negative 45, and x-intercepts at negative 5 and 3. So since my uh, axis of symmetry goes through x equals negative 1, I know that my graph will look like this. So now that I have my graph, I'm going to go ahead and find where is this graph greater than 0. So I need to find where is the function greater than 0. Where is the function greater than 0? Well, the only place that's above the x-axis is this part and this part. All of this down here is below the x-axis, therefore my function is negative down here. My function is positive or above the x-axis on the ends. So this is going to be a split interval. So my graph is above the x-axis or greater than 0 from negative infinity all the way up until I get to negative 5 then it's also above the x-axis from 3 up to positive infinity to the right. Again, we do not include the end caps because I'm not including them to equal 0. So these guys will not be included. So to answer the final question in interval notation, from negative infinity to negative 5, union 3 to infinity.